All right, man, let's get our spirits ready. We're going to jump right into the message, and then we're going to have praise and worship at the end of my message today. I want to ask you the question, what are you expecting? What are you expecting? See, going into 2021, you've got to be expecting things to change. You've got to be expecting that God's going to increase. You've got to be expecting that God's going to do a breakthrough. You've got to be expecting that God's going to heal. You've got to be expecting that God's going to restore. You've got to be expecting that God's going to bless. You've got to be expecting. Nothing happens by chance, but God is looking for people who are looking for him. God is looking for people who are anticipating him. God is looking for people to say, yes, Lord, come quickly, Lord. Yes, Lord, we need you. Yes, Lord, I want you. God is looking for people who are anticipating and expecting. So turn to your neighbor and say, are you expecting? (laughs) Some of you ladies are like, "I I hope I'm not. And others are like, I hope I am. Praise the Lord. That's another conversation to have at home with your husband. All right. Let's go to our text in Luke 3, 15. Everyone was what? Let's say that word together. Everyone was? See, there's something about the spirit of anticipation. They were expecting the Messiah to come soon. And they were eager to know whether John might be the Messiah. And John said, no, 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 no. He goes, I baptize you with water. But there's someone coming who is so much greater than I am. So much greater. He goes, I'm not even worthy to be his slave or to untie the straps of his sandals. He goes, I I baptize you in water. But he's going to come and baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. I mean, he said, there's someone coming who's going to baptize in the Holy Spirit and fire. They were expecting. They were eager. Now, I was thinking about this. I was like, you know, it would be very hard to be waiting. They had been waiting. The scripture teaches us that there had been several hundred years of silence, that God hadn't spoken, that he hadn't raised up a major prophet to speak. And, and John the Baptist began to raise up and speak now. Be ready. The Messiah is coming. And all of a sudden, they're, they're looking again. But, you know, I was thinking, they said, man, I've been hearing this for generation after generation after generation. Is the Messiah really going to come? I can understand their doubt if they had it. I could understand being complacent, not knowing, uh, sure, they say it's going to happen, but no, it says they were expecting, even though they had never seen the Messiah, they were expecting the Messiah. And not only were they expecting the Messiah, they were expecting him to come with baptizing in fire and with the Holy Spirit. I mean, they were looking and I thought, you know, I wonder how strange it must be for God to realize that people who had never seen or experienced Jesus were expecting Jesus, looking for Jesus, wanting Jesus to move. And we who have experienced Jesus, all of his grace, we know the story of the birth. We know the story of the death and the resurrection on Easter Sunday morning. We know about all that. We know about the Holy Spirit being poured out on the day of Pentecost. We know about all these things. But yet, do we anticipate or is our spirit anticipating? Are we expecting God to show up? Are we expecting God to show out in our life? Are we expecting God to move in my life? Am I expecting something fresh from God this year? Am I expecting a baptism of the Holy Spirit in my life this year? Am I expecting the baptism of the fire in my life this year? Am I expecting God to do something great in my life? Listen, we need to expect We need to praise in expectation. We need to give in expectation. We need to pray in expectation. We need to worship in expectation. We need to come to church in expectation. We need to study the word in expectation. We need to wake up and go and walk tomorrow in expectation that God, you are with me. God, you are for me. God, you are gonna do something today. We must raise our level of expectancy. Colossians 2.14 says this. He canceled the record of the charges against us and he has taken it out of the way. Let's say that word together. He has taken it out of the way. One more time. He has taken it out of the way. Nailing it to the cross. Sometimes we stand and we're like, well, you know what? I need a miracle, but I haven't been that good. 
I need a miracle, but I'm, I'm not perfect. I need a miracle, and there's things in my life. Listen, the Bible says God has taken it out of the way. Those things are no longer standing between me and the Father. No more is my sin in front of me. It's behind me. It's been buried in the blood of Jesus. Therefore, I can boldly approach the Father, not based on my merit, but based on what the Son has done. And I can boldly go expecting that God is going to hear me, that God is going to see me, that God is wanting to do something in my life. See, we got to expect God to pour out something to us new in my life. I must be expecting this year that, God, you're going to do something new. I must expect pain to leave my body. I must expect healing to happen in my body. I must believe and expect to receive my miracle. I must be believing and expect God to deliver my from addiction. I must expect and believe that God is going to deliver me from my fear and anxiety. I must expect expect that God's going to deliver me from depression. You've got to raise up your level of expectancy. Are you expecting today? It's important. See, when we begin to expect, we raise faith in our life. And without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. See, faith engages God. Faith moves the heart of God. I love what Psalms 119, 126 says. It says this, it says, Lord, it is time for you to act. For these evil people have violated your instructions. Now, I don't have to go along and point this out. It's pretty evident to us. Are we living in a time when people are violating the word of God? Yeah, like never before. Casting aside the word. No, my, my, my ideas are better than the word of God. My plan is better. It overcomes the word of God. No, we, we see it more than ever. And the Bible says when we see this happening, it's time for God to move. It's time for God to move. Let me declare to you, it's time for God to move. Let me declare to your life, it's time for God to move. Let me say it one more time. It's time for God to move. We need God to show up, show out in our life and to do things. And he's looking for somebody who's anticipating. He's looking for a church who's anticipating. He's looking for a person who's anticipating. He's looking for a community who's anticipating. Are we anticipating that God wants to move? Many of you are facing giants this year. But you need to realize and remember that God, you help me beat the lion and the bear. In my past, God, you were there. You helped me overcome when I was facing the lion in my life. You helped me overcome when I was facing this bear of a problem in my life. And so as I look and stare down the giant ahead of me, I'm anticipating that God, greater is he that is for me than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. God, I, I'm standing today strong, knowing that, God, you're wanting to defeat anything lying ahead of me. My, my faith is in the Lord. Romans 8, 17 says, Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God. Not only heirs of God, but we are, and what? Joint heirs. Let's say that. And joint heirs with Christ. Indeed, we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Now, did you know you're an heir of God? You are an heir of God. But I got some good news for you today. You're just not an heir of God. If you've given your life to Jesus, the Bible says we are children of the Lord. We are adopted into his family and we are heirs of God. But let me tell you this. The good news is this. Not only are you heirs of God, but you're joint heirs with his son. Meaning you've got a double claim to the blessing that God has for your life. God wants to do it not just once. He wants to do a double blessing into your life. God wants you to have a double claim to the things of God. Anticipate it. Come on now. Lift up your faith. Quit walking by just trying to get by and say, no, I want to thrive. When others are diving, I want to thrive. When others are in their despair, I want to pick my head up and know that, God, you're in control. We're going to be okay. There was a lame man from birth who was sitting outside the temple. He was begging, and remember when Peter and John came by? And they looked at him and said, Sir, 
I know what you're wanting. You're wanting money, but silver and gold have I not, such as we have, we give unto you. And they reached out their hands, rise up and walk. And it says the man leaped to his feet right away. He got up right away. God touched his life right away. This man began to walk right away. And look what happened in Acts 3, 5. So he gave them his attention. See, and when the man of God came by, that he gave his attention. He was what? He was expecting. Let's say he was expecting to receive something from them. Now, what he didn't know, he was expecting a, a small blessing. But what he didn't know, God was going to bring a blessing that was going to change his life forever. What had paralyzed him all of his life was no longer going to paralyze him any longer. I'm telling you, when you... No, you never know. When you begin to expect from God, you never know what can happen. God can take the very thing that's been paralyzing you all of your life, and God can say, stand up, son. Stand up, daughter. <laughs> See, if Satan is attacking you today, he's not attacking you because of your past. He's not attacking you because you was a bad person in your past. Or you made some bad mistakes. He's not attacking you because of your past. If he's attacking you, it's because he's afraid of your future. He sees you. He's like, all right, I know if that person gets delivered, woo, they're going to be trouble for me. If that person gets see, says free from addiction, man, the people they're going to bring into the kingdom... If that person gets free and they start giving, I know the children that are going to be impacted around the world. Woo, he sees you free. And so the enemy doesn't want that. He's going to distract from you. He's going to try to kill, steal, and destroy from you. But I got news for you today. From the time I can remember until this present day, I can look back and I remember seasons where the enemy wanted to destroy my life, destroy my family, destroy my children. Yeah, I've been under attack. I grew up. I remember again attacking my family, attacking my parents. I remember as a young pastor attacking my family. I've sat in double funerals before. I've sat in times when I didn't know what the answer was going to be. I said in times when everybody's talking about you. I said in times when the enemy was trying to take my children out. I said in times when the enemy was coming against me. But I got news for the enemy today. I'm still standing today. And I'm anticipating today. There's something about standing in anticipation that my greatest years are ahead of me. My greatest ministry is ahead of me. My most fruitful time is ahead of me. Or today, are you experiencing that? Are you expecting that in your life? I'm expecting that God's going to do something great. We got to raise that level of expectation. I wish somebody would stand up today and let the enemy know right now that you're still standing. Somebody needs to stand up and let them know I'm still standing. I'm still standing. Come on now. Tell them I'm still standing. You ain't taking me out. You tried to kill my marriage, but my marriage is going to make it. You tried to take my life, but we're going to make it. You try to take my joy, devil, but I'm still singing. So there's something about praising anyway. Praise in anticipation. Look at this. For, for God is not just unjust. Look at our scripture here. For God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown to him. For you have helped his people and continue to help them. God is not unjust. The scripture says that when we say the word unjust, it's saying God, he cannot be unrighteous. There's no, he is righteousness. It's impossible for God to be unjust, to be unrighteous. And so it's impossible. If it's impossible for him to be unjust, then it's impossible for him to forget the works you have given to him. The works you have done and labored. The love you've shown to others when nobody else saw it. When you didn't take time to post it on Facebook. And no one gave you a pat on the back. But you did the right thing anyways. The time you didn't feel like coming, but you came anyway. The time you didn't have it to give and you gave anyway. God is unjust. He will realize this. He sees it. And he's faithful. And he will continue to help you. Expect it. God, I'm still standing. I'm expecting it. 
When I was a kid, I used to love it when I had sick days when I was a kid. How many remember those days when you were sick as a kid? Now, I'm telling you now, today when you're sick as a kid, it's a little different than in the 70s and 80s. Because how many remember on a sick day on a kid in the 70s and 80s, you got to spend it on the couch. You know, because we didn't have phones and tablets, you know. We, we got to go to the couch. <coughs> yeah, Mom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it. Uh, maybe. Uh, I'll try to go to school. <laughs> no, honey, stay home. Okay. Ferris, we're praying for you. I'll be all right, Mom. <coughs> you know, I loved because we got all the seven up. We wanted to drink that day. We got some, it's got some soup and crackers, you know. They can be serving to you on the couch. But what I really liked about staying home on those sick days was there was a show on that I couldn't watch after school. It was a show called The Price is Right. Come on now. Anybody like The Price is Right? Anybody remember Bob Barker, The Price is Right? Come on now. A long, skinny microphone. This is Bob Barker. Yeah, you know. Now, I would love it when, when he would say, all right, tell us who's the next contestant. And they would say, all right, Tom, Tom Harden, you're the next contestant on The Price is Right. Come on down. And everybody go crazy. Da, 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 da. You know, and every once in a while, you had a few people that were, like, nervous. They'd be down there like, oh, God, I can't believe I'm here, you know. Oh, my, it's Bob Barker. Oh. You know, and they're nervous. But what I really liked was the people who were anticipating, who were excited. And you have people, they call their name, all of a sudden they're like, da, 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 yeah! They're high-fiving everybody down the aisles. They're running up and down, and they catch their breath. Oh, Bob, 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 I've been watching you for years. I've been putting in for this show for years. Oh, oh, I'm ready. Woo, woo! All right, show us this vacuum cleaner. Woo, woo! Haven't even bid yet. They're already anticipating they're going to win something, right? They're already excited because if I, if I get down there, then I, I might win that vacuum cleaner. And if I win that vacuum cleaner, I might win the furniture set and the new TV. And if I win that, I might win the showcase showdown and win a free vacation to Fuji, a new motorcycle, and a new car. I mean, they, they were anticipating what might happen. And they were so excited. And you could always tell the ones who were church-going people. Because they get down there, oh, thank you, Lord. Woo! Thank you, Bob. Hallelujah. Woo! I mean, it was entertainment gold. I loved it. I, I know we're having a little fun today, but I wonder how many of us realize that God is calling our name every day. God's calling your name every day. Come on down. I'm here. I'm ready to walk with you. I'm ready to talk with you. Come on down. I'm ready to bless you. Come on down. I'm ready to touch you. Come on down. I got something for you today. So you got to expect. Raise your level of expectancy. Let faith rise up. Listen, when Jesus is in the room, anything is possible. Someone needs to hear that again. When Jesus is in the room, anything is possible. So when I get up, God, I'm walking with you today. Anything is possible. But when I'm coming to church, ooh, i got the promise that where two or three or more are gathered in my name, I will be there. I know that the Bible says that in the praise, God inhabits. In the worship, God dwells. You can find him there. And so I'm going to come with anticipation that, God, you're filling this place today. God, not only in my heart, a fresh anointing, fresh blessing, but, God, you're filling the house today. And I'm believing it. I'm believing it. I'm expecting it. I love the story of blind Bartimaeus. How many people like this story? It's a story in the Bible about a man who was blind. And the Bible says that this man, he was blind all of his life, and he had a cloak around him. Now, this cloak would have been given to him by the government. I like this, this format because I think it's something that we should probably implement today. Because there's, there's the government at this time, if people who had a legitimate reason to be begging, they would receive a, a, a 
legal cloak from the issued from the government that would let people, this person really does have a need and they have a reason to be begging. I mean, today we don't know it, do it. Today we pass by a sign, someone's holding a sign, you're like, I want to help, but man, I don't want them to take that money and be using it for something they shouldn't be using on. Are they really lying? Are they scamming me? Are they just afraid to work? Do they really need help? If they really need help, I'd like to, we have all those questions. And so I like this system because it identified if this person really had a legitimate need and was worth you taking and giving to that, hey, this only way this person survived was the money you give them and it identified them and people were more generous to help these people. And I love this story because the Bible says that the man was there where he usually was toward the edge of the city. And he heard the crowd coming and he heard noise and he heard that Jesus was in the area. And he began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And people are like, shh, shh, dude, keep quiet. There's, Jesus is here. Down, down. You know, somebody important's here. Don't, don't embarrass the community that way. Be on a Jesus like you need. Settle down. You got to be more dignified. This is Jesus the Messiah. And the Bible says, instead of being quiet, he said, Jesus, even louder, son of David, have mercy on me. I love that. Sometimes you you gotta you gotta let your praise and it ain't gonna make it makes sense to nobody else. Sometimes you have you ever been there? I've been there when your praise, nobody else knows why you're praising the way you are. Sometimes you be driving your car and you're crying in your car and you're praising in your car and you're praying in your car and people look at you like you're crazy. That person's crazy. It's all right. They don't know what you've been through, but they don't know where you're going, and you have a revelation of where God's taking you through. You have a revelation that God, you're going going to restore my joy. God, you're going to restore my peace. God, you're going to restore my family. You get to cry out to the Lord. Now look at this, look at this story here in Mark chapter 10, 48 and 50. Many rebuked him, told him to be quiet, but he shouted out even the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, hey, call him. So they called on the blind man, cheer up. Come on down, blind man. You're the next contestant. Jesus wants to see you. They call Jesus is calling you, man. Je- get up. Look at his response. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. Isn't it amazing that this blind man calls out to Jesus, even when he's being told to be quiet, he continues to praise and call out to Jesus. I believe the place was noisy. I believe the crowd was overwhelming Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, yeah. everything. All you could hear was chatter, and, and you probably couldn't hear somebody who was three people over from you. It's just my personal opinion. But I believe when he yelled out, when he was told to be quiet, that something in faith ignited the ears of Jesus And Jesus heard him and said, hey, bring that man to me. And that man, the Bible says, took off his cloak, laid it down, and went to Jesus. One question. Was this man healed yet? No. This man wasn't. Wait, you mean he took off his cloak? He's blind. It's not like he's going to go back and find it again. I'm sure somebody had already picked it up and said, woohoo, here's my meal train ticket right now. I'll use this in the next town. This man laid down his cloak of blindness and said this, I'm taking the Jesus is calling my name. All right, something's about to change in my life today. Something's about to change in my vision today. Something's about to be released in my life today. And by faith, he laid down his cloak and went to Jesus. And we know that Jesus touched his vision and this man was healed. But long before he was healed, he laid down his cloak in anticipation. What are you anticipating today? What are you believing for today? Paul and Silas chained up in prison. Did they praise God before they were released or after they were released? 
before. It was in the middle of their chains. It was in the middle of their chains that they began to praise the Lord. It was in the middle of their chains that they let the prison know that, you know what, no matter what happens, I'm going to praise the Lord because I'm at peace that God is going to move. I'm at peace that God, you're going to work. One man lays down his cloak before he's ever healed. I believe God's going to heal my vision. I'm already healed. He's walking in faith. Two other guys sold out of praise in the middle of their chains. And while they're praising, the Bible says that the gates begin to come open of the prison. That the angel of the Lord loosened their chains and they fell off of them. And they walked out unharmed out of that prison. Why? Because by faith, they let out of praise. How about the walls of Jericho? Did they fall on their own? No, they fell when the praise went out. God given instructions, walk around for seven days. And on the seventh day, I want you to walk around and give out a loud shout of praise, a loud shout of victory. And on the seventh day, they gave out the loud shout of praise. What happened? The walls of the enemy came crumbling down. It's through the praise. How about King Jehoshaphat? He said this, the army of the Lord today is surrounded by many people. The many armies have come to destroy us, but it's all right. God's already showed us the path to victory. He goes, praise team, lead the way. Praise team, go on out. Now you and I, we hear this, we're like sending out the praise team and holding back the military. Doesn't seem like a very smart strategic move, does it? Let's send out the guys in the skinny jeans. Come on now. Let's send out these. Let's let them go out there and fight our battles. But how many know it's not a battle of flesh and blood, but it's one one in the heavenlies. And when you release the praise, come on now. The worship team went out. They began to praise. They began to worship. And God fought their battle and delivered them that day without them, even with the struggle. I'm telling you, when you release a praise with anticipation, when you release worship in anticipation, when you allow God to move in anticipation, it moves the heart of God. What are you expecting for 2021? That's the question you have to answer today. What are you expecting? I'm expecting God to do great things. I'm expecting God to use you. I'm expecting God to use you in a great way this year. God's going to use you to do more than what you could dream or imagine. God's going to use me. He's going to use you. And together, he's going to use us to do more than we can ever dream of by ourselves. God is going to do great things. I want you to raise your spirit and your level of anticipation. 